Ladies and gentlemen, if you never played Counter-Strike before or any FPS whatsoever, then there's a lot of terms that you might not know. People are throwing out all kinds of terms like rotate, CT spawn, double peak. So in this video, let's break down a pretty sizable list of all the important terms that you need to know so that your comms can be on point in Valorant. All that being said, if you want to improve a Valorant, do me a huge favor, smash that sub button. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, the first term that we have to define on our list is default. Default is playing in the zones right before you get to a choke point where you typically play for a certain amount of time, you apply pressure to the enemy, and you bait out utility without moving in, that's default. Now the next term we want to talk about is wall banging, and wall banging is simply just shooting through walls. You'll be able to easily see what walls you could shoot through. When you shoot through them, there'll be this black dot that means your bullets are actually going through. So if someone says wall bang hookah or something like that, they mean that you should clear it out by wall banging multiple corners and all the boxes inside. Now the next term is lurker, which what a lurker is is someone who purposely stays away from his team or plays separate from his team, trying to catch people when they try to rotate so you can get some free kills unexpectedly. Typically some characters are better at lurking, like potentially omen or cypher, characters that have a way in order to punish enemies that are simply just speed running, trying to go rotate. Now the next term is eco round or someone might say half buy, which means that you're only going to buy down to that 2000 credit mark, because even if you lose, you'll get that 1900 credit so that you can buy a full armor plus an assault rifle. So that's what they mean here. Now the next term is anti eco, which means that you know that the enemy is going to be on a save round or a light buy round. This is particularly important to call for your teammates. When you realize the enemy is probably not going to be running assault rifles, you could take longer engagements. The next term is full save, which means don't buy anything. Every single person on your team should save when your team is full saving. Unless one member of the team has an exceptional amount of money, they shouldn't buy. And honestly, they probably shouldn't buy altogether so they could save that money for down the road. The next term is forced buy, which means that when you don't have enough money for the best buy, but you still want to spend all your money in gear, that is when you force buy in some clutch rounds or when you want to mix it up against your enemies. Stack means put more than a normal amount of players on one bomb site. This could be seen as a mix up, but essentially the idea here is, is that you try to predict where the enemies are going to go to and you have more people already stacked there just by that Hail Mary play, usually when you're at a disadvantage in some way like a save round. The next term is rotate, which means that you're going to leave the place that you're attacking or defending and you're going to move on to support your team on the other side. You say rotate to B side, which means that you need to rotate to that side to help your team for either defending the point or taking it. Now, another term you'll hear often is one shot. So when someone says one shot in comms, oftentimes it means that the person that they shot is 149 HP. Moving on to the next term, and this is a term that I just had a hard time learning right off the bat because my time with CSGO was really limited, but people will say CT spawn or T spawn, which has to do with understanding terrorists in Counter-Strike. So counter terrorist side is the defender side and terrorist T side is attacker side. So I know that it doesn't make any sense in this game. No one's a terrorist and I thought the same thing too, but most of the players that play this game, especially at the higher levels, are all CSGO players. So if you do not learn this, you're just completely confused like I was. I'm like, what the heck? What do you mean T-spawn, CT-spawn? Yeah, you have to learn this. CT-spawn is defender, T-spawn is attacker. Now, baiting is a term that often gets thrown around, but essentially what this is, is essentially what you're doing here is you're holding default, a term we talked about before, and you're simply just waiting for one of your teammates to go in for one of your teammates to go in and die and give you precious information about where enemies are so that you could trade out for the kill. It's known as a pretty scummy tactic because essentially you're playing extremely passively and you're making your teammates engage. Now there's another term that could be called trade kill, refrag, counter swing, or anything like that. Essentially what that means is that if you or someone you know dies, the person that does this trade kill or counter swing or whatever, they essentially want to make sure that you do not die for free. You die, but they swing on the person that just killed you and they kill him. So essentially you trade one for one. So you never let the enemy get a kill and get out safely. Now the next term is double peak, essentially where two players will peak the same angle at the same time. Generally what you want to do with this is you want one person to swing a little bit wider than the other person. So it's best to coordinate this, you say double peak, I'll peak wide, and that's something that you can do to get on the same page with your allies. Now the next term is wide peak, and what that is, is that's where you go really far away from the wall. This is typically better against things like operators, because essentially what you want to do is you don't want to barely peak the angle, you want to peak it really wide so that it allows a higher margin of error for the enemy to mess up on this shot. Now, jiggle peek or shoulder peek is something that you might have heard, but essentially this is where you quickly peek, you quickly just get information really fast, and the idea here is, is you're already going back 
behind natural cover by the time you actually see them you peek in and peek out really quickly just to get information just keep in mind that even if you shoulder peek against a lot of rifles if they react in time you could either die or at the very least get tagged tagging is a term that i'm going to use a little bit later now crossfire is a defensive stance where two enemies are lined up in a way that they both can see the enemy at the same time making it extremely hard for a peeking enemy to take them both out essentially what the enemy would have to do is look at someone and kill someone and then flick all the way to the other one using like a crazy 90 degree flick or something like that in order to kill them both so more likely than not he's only going to be able to get one person at the very maximum but probably you could actually kill him if you fire at the same time now the next term is dink which means you're getting a headshot on the enemy that doesn't die this is really important to let someone know that they're kind of low hp i dinked him which it's often better to say i dinked him for the actual value of damage because you know it after you die now the next term is lit, tagged, hit. This is pretty much like if you say X person is lit for X damage, you're telling your teammates how much they have taken damage for. If you say you tagged someone, that just means you did a little bit of damage to them. They might be slow at the time or anything like that. This is just important for focus fire and generally telling your team how much damage is on somebody. Now the term buy me or drop me is just basically what it sounds. Buy me a weapon, just I need a drop or anything like that, which you could also just press the button, but I thought you should know it here. The next term is pre-fire, which means that you're going to actually fire at an angle before you actually see it. You're already going into the angle already firing. So, for example, you know that someone is playing usually in the left cubby. So you walk into that room and immediately look at the left cubby and fire before you even actually are looking at the left cover you're already starting the fire before then this means that if there's an enemy there they're already gonna die or take damage and you're gonna be able to actually kill them before either of you have actually processed the information which is really a strong tactic and it's something that you should start incorporating into your gameplay as you play the game more as you build up the intuition you really want to pre-fire a lot of angles especially with the science weapon now the next term is heaven or hell or under heaven heaven is just like any high ground people just call any high ground heaven uh, for some reason if you're high up you're in heaven and then underneath they'll either say under heaven or hell they'll never say upper hell so i don't i don't really get any of that but that's just what you need to understand heaven or under heaven slash hell or the high ground or right underneath the high ground now the next term is play for picks or play slow or default this is basically playing in that default zone that i talked about before where you're not quite going in and essentially what you do there is you're just waiting there you're putting pressure on the enemy you're baiting out utility and you're waiting for the enemy to make a mistake once you get a pick that will instantly set the play in motion to push whatever point either push the point that the person died on or rotate to the other point or whatever but you're essentially just waiting it out playing for picks waiting for the enemy to be over eager and to punish them now speaking of punish as a general video game term the term punish means to specifically punish the enemy or make them pay with their life or whatever for doing a certain play you could say punish the enemy for opping close range or punish the enemy for whipping out her ultimate right in front of you or punish the sage for rezzing or anything like that you're just trying to punish them for whatever X scenario is that the person says. Now, fake defuse or tap the bomb. This is basically when you start defusing and instantly get off of it. This basically makes it seem that the enemy is actually defusing the spike. Some cool tip that they actually pointed out in this Reddit thread is that if you actually want to bait defuse like this, fake defuse, you shouldn't make any footsteps afterwards. You fake defuse and then you stand there. Because if the enemy hears footsteps, they know that you're not actually committing to it. But if you don't hear any footsteps, then you don't know if the enemy got offered or not because it doesn't make any audio noise. Something that's a pretty cool tip, something that you should keep in mind. Now, the next term is something like stick it, which is something that means that you should just try and stick the bob and not get off of it maybe you don't have enough time or maybe the enemy is not quite going to be able to kill you before you stick the bomb defuse that is when you actually want to stick the bomb stay to it if someone on your team calls for that just hold that defuse button and you probably will be able to stick it out now another term you might hear is plant for x and what this means is you want to plant with an los or line of sight which is another term i didn't talk about here but los means line of sight line of sight of whatever you could say line of sight of heaven or line of sight of this side ct side or whatever and that just means that if your teammates are playing that zone, they can see the spike from that zone, which is really important because like if your teammates have control of heaven, right? You want to make sure that the spike is in view of heaven because if the enemy rushes to point and kills you and then they start defusing and your enemies can't see them from heaven, they're not going to be able to kill that person or get to them in time to stop the defuse. So that is why it's extremely important for you to get this right. Now, the next term would be something like safe plant, which means that you just want to put the bomb down in the safest way possible. Oftentimes, that means that there are enemies near the site or on the site, and you want to be planting in a way that no one can see you at all so that you don't die while you're planting. So 
you plant it in a cubby or something behind natural cover. Now, another term would be default plant. Planting in the most common location for that bomb site is basically just like status quo plant or normal plant. This is just planting wherever it is that everyone always plants, and there's always a place in mind. Every time you think of where does everyone plant on this map, you can definitely think about it, and that's the default plant. Another term would be play the bomb, which means that you don't need to go aggressively and go chase after enemies after you planted the bomb. Essentially what you're doing is you're just playing around the bomb and forcing the enemy to either clear out every angle or they go and try to defuse the bomb and then you know where they are. So that's where you're playing the bomb. In a similar way, the term play for time means that you want to utilize the time that you have to your advantage in order to actually win the round. So basically you just want to wait around, make sure that you don't take fights too quickly and that if you can at least stall the enemy, then they won't have enough time to defuse. So you don't want to take fights too rapidly and you want to put pressure on the enemy to actually rush the defuse and try to rush flushing you out, which could make them sloppy and it could make it a lot easier for you to kill them. Now, the next term would be something like retake together, which means that you need to wait for your allies in order to retake a bomb site instead of running in one at a time. Just say, hey, retake together. That means that everyone should be waiting wherever they're coming from and try to engage the site at the same time. Now, there's numbers advantage and ult advantage. These are specifically talking about, hey, we have numbers advantage. We have more members of our teammates alive. They, you could also say, I have ult advantage. We have more ults on the enemy. That's something that you could really relate to your team. You could even say something like ability advantage if you know that you baited out a whole bunch of abilities on the enemy team and you still have a whole bunch of them that your teammates and yourself has sandbag. Now, the last term that we have to do today is glass cannon. This is an actual new term that I just found out about. It's basically when you buy an operator or some really expensive weapon like a... AR or something like that and you didn't even buy any armor with it so essentially you're going all in on attack stats you got no defensive stats which is probably usually not worth it but I could see some scenarios where if you buy an operator and you're holding a really long sideline it's better than not buying an operator especially because you're playing so far out of their effective range you could still kill them without them doing enough damage to kill you. Now, as much as I would want to take credit for this list, I can't. It's almost all compiled by this guy called Stanky FPS on Reddit. Definitely go check him out. Definitely go look at his work. He did a really good job here. And I think a lot of people helped for that. But I wanted to make this video so if you didn't see this post or if you just don't follow the Reddit or anything like that, you still know all these things. And it was actually really insightful for me as well because I haven't really played that much CSGO like I said before in the past. A lot of these terms just seem really counterintuitive for a game like Valorant but they're really important for you to learn especially as we enter this transitionary period where no one really knows what things are going to actually be called we have all these official names but a lot of times in my games when i call something the official real name that it's actually called on the map they have no idea what i'm talking about and then they they call something some crazy thing like u-haul or ct spawn or anything like that and i don't really know what they mean but now i do and it's really important that you learn it as well so i hope this guide has been extremely helpful for you and if you have any questions comments concerns or if there's any other type of term that you think people need to know definitely let me know in the comments down below and then the community can actually learn from your insight as well anyways of course do me a huge solid and smash that sub button and i'm going to keep you up to date on every news guide anything that you need to know about valorant anyways that's all we got for you today i'm coach bills and until next time